Hello everyone, I'm George from Ireland. Behind me is the house where um, Sir Thomas Young uh, lived most of the latter half of his life. You can see the blue plaque there. So Sir Thomas Young um, was renowned in several fields, uh, in medicine, particularly ophthalmology, uh, in physics, um, in um, uh, linguistics. So um, Young was born uh, in Milverton, which is in Somerset, that's a county in the southwest of England. He was uh, from a family of 10 children. They were bourgeois, they were part of the religious society of friends. It's commonly called um, the Quakers. Um, so he was someone who was a prodigy, even when he was very little. They noticed his extraordinary aptitude for learning in all sorts of subjects. Um, maths was just a cinch to him and languages just seemed to come, up, come to him. He was a bibliomane. Um, almost from his infancy. So he acquired a useful knowledge of 14 languages, some of them rather obscure like Syriac, or ones he probably never had a chance to speak in a real situation like Amharic, the main language of Ethiopia, you know, ancient languages like Latin and ancient Greek. Of course, those were the cornerstones of education in those days. Mm. So uh, then he went to Edinburgh University. Um, I'm not sure what he was reading there. Was he eventually qualified as a doctor? He went to the University of Göttingen um, in Germany for a while. And um, bear in mind the Napoleonic Wars were going on through much of his, his youth. He doesn't seem to have cared about politics very much, even though this country was in tumult. Um, should there be a revolution in this country? He's is, is, is living in the run-up to, to the Great Reformer Act in the latter part of his life. Um, so he went to Emmanuel College, Cambridge, and, and going down from there, he set himself up in medical practice here. Uh, his great uncle died, leaving him a considerable legacy. So he had plenty of money, and he didn't need to practice medicine to make a living, but he just chose to do so because he wanted to put something back, I suppose. Uh, so he was fascinated by light, optics, ophthalmology, Obviously, they're all connected, and uh, he's the one who came up with the, the, the wave theory of light. Previously, the received wisdom had been that they were particles. Sir Isaac Newton had believed that. And what Sir Isaac said was gospel in this country for about a century after his death, until Young came along. Um, he gained international recognition. He got some award from the American Academy of Sciences. He was voted onto the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences and, and things like that. So he married Eliza, but they had they had no children. Um, so he practiced at various hospitals and here patients coming to him, I think, at the house. Um, now, we're, in, uh, we're on Welbeck Street in the Marlebone area of London. Anyway, in 1799, there was uh, Napoleon's e expedition to Egypt. Well, it began the year before, but anyway, he brought with him lots of savants, or scholars. And uh, at Rosetta in Egypt, they discovered this ancient stone uh, with this inscription and carved into it was something in, in Egyptian hieroglyphs, as it means um, holy uh, carvings in, in ancient Greek, hieroglyph, and, um, the, uh, uh, and also in Greek as well. So this, the copies of it were made, it was hawked around Europe, people were trying to figure out what it was. Various German and Swedish scholars tried to work on it. Now it wasn't written as a code, but uh, if it had become one, could anyone crack the cipher? Because you've got it in a language you understand, ancient Greek, and so presumably it says the same thing in hieroglyphs, not necessarily in the same order, um, of which are the most frequently occurring words, so there, there are several hundred words. but. Um, the, the, the German and Swedish scholars got to work in it. They made some progress. He translated a further 200 words. There were some that he couldn't figure out. And eventually, Jean-Francois Champollion, a French scholar, was able to complete the task. And some people think he didn't give sufficient credit to the spade work done by uh, Thomas Young. Had it not been for Young, maybe, maybe he never would have succeeded. So Champollion is someone who deserves another video. If I can go to a place relevant to him, that'll have to be in France. Uh, again, who was a hyperpolyglot, more so than him, but was only in that field of languages, um, and was a professor of languages at the age of 21 or something ridiculous like that. So um, uh, Francis Young, what was I, what was I going to say? So some of, he did some work which was built on by, by Einstein and James Clerk Maxwell. I don't know anything about physics, so I'm not going to talk about that aspect um, of his life. So uh, then he finally died of arteriosclerosis of the aorta. As a doctor, perhaps he should have taken better care of himself. But he was very um, humble, self-effacing, soft-spoken. He even published a lot of his learned articles anonymously. He was never showing off about his, about his ability. And he was asked to explain things. He would do so in, in layman's terms insofar as possible, not trying to blind with science, uh, not sesquipedalian. Well, 
not like me then. Um, so then uh, he died. He's buried in Kent. I'm not quite sure why. Possibly had a country house there. Anyway, that is Sir Thomas Young. Toodaloo.